You may wonder why I'm starting with a picture of snacks on the, on the screen. Well, it's pretty simple. I want to tell you a story before we jump into what I think is probably the biggest nerf in AI coding assistant pricing that I've seen to date. And I don't think it's going to be the last one. So I, this was years ago. I worked at a company. They provided snacks. So we had, we had sodas, lemonade, uh, teas. P3s were like one of the most popular thing. They have, which are, if you don't know, this a little container. It's got like nuts, cheese, and, and uh, ham bites in it. One of the teams decided that every time they would restock, they would hoard all the P3s just for their little pod. And leadership at the time started getting lots of complaints from everyone. Of course you would, right? Like that's kind of annoying when you see like people hoard over as soon as it restocks, taking it all and then putting it in their little mini fridge. So what did leadership do? Leadership, instead of really addressing the issue with people hoarding, they did ask nicely, to be fair. But instead of actually asking them to stop doing that directly and making them remove the mini fridge, they actually removed P3s from what they were even providing anymore because it became such a contentious thing. I bring this up because when you're a leader at a company, whether it's something that's happening internally or when you're making pricing adjustments, you really do need to decide, are you actually going to address the people that are abusing the system? Or are you going to punish everyone? Or is everyone going to be impacted? And I'm going to jump into a post that I did on X because I think I did a, not to pat myself on the back, but I think I did an okay, fair, a balanced way of addressing this. My first thing that I want to say is they talk about in their blog post, which I'll show you here in a second, someone highly abusing the system. We'll get into those numbers here in a bit. But the bigger thing is, are they punishing everyone instead of addressing the abuse? Because the abuse is the one example that they give for why they're making this change. They don't give others. They don't say, hey, people that are on the $60 a month plan actually on average are losing us money too. They don't talk about that. No, they talk about the extreme cases, the fringe cases. Now, I do want to back up and just be reasonable here. We want these businesses to be profitable. I understand that businesses need to be profitable. I have actually ran businesses myself for years. The last company that I ran and built, I ended up selling in 2018. And I had times where we were losing money and it was very, very stressful. In fact, you can probably see the gray hair in my head. It was, it's very challenging. But at the end of the day, like you still need to be transparent and fair to everyone that's using your product. It's, it's going to be harder and harder for these companies that are selling you like these price, these plans, like $30, $60, whatever a month that don't own the model or the compute. It's going to be harder and harder for them to actually compete. And I think the mat, the, where they need to go is very similar to what droid is doing. And I haven't used droid enough to be able to talk like a lot about them. I actually have plans to do that. But what droid does is they allow you to bring your own key. So you can, you can actually buy usage through them or you can bring a key in and use it for whatever. That is amazing. And I think companies like Augment are going to have to do that going forward. But how big of a nerf is this actually? So let's say that each of my messages that I send is 500 credits. What is a credit? Who the heck knows? Because now we've introduced another currency in the mix here. I'll talk about that in a bit here. I'm not a fan of that, but let's just say 500 credits. I get 600 messages today. That means that I could have had the potential of on average 300,000 credits of usage. What do you think my plan, my plan, which I'm on the legacy plan to be fair, gets actually brought in at 56,000. And you can see that here, 56,000. So my plan, which originally had 600 messages, now has 56,000 credits, which is about a 70% nerf. Now, there is a case where maybe some of my messages are smaller. In fact, if I jump over here into my Rayleigh on web app, you can see here, I asked a simple question. This is a very light credit usage question here. So even at 30, or uh, even at 300 per message, that's 180,000 credits. 
which if we look at the actual pricing that they have listed here, we can actually see that at a $60 a month plan, that would be 130,000. So we, me, myself in particular, because I'm on the legacy plan has been nerfed between, I would say what I've calculated is between 70% to 90%. Now, if you're on the $60 a month plan, you're, you're now getting more credits than me because we're no longer, we're no longer on the same plan anymore. I think it was $30 and $50 before. In fact, even on their website, they still have it listed as the $20 and $50 a month plan. So before I was, I was grandfathered in at 30, the $50 a month plan was what I was technically getting. And if you're on the $50 a month plan, that no longer exists anymore. You are now going to be, uh, your new option if you're signing up, is going to be a $60 a month plan at 130,000 credits. So the nerf that I'm getting is between 70% to 90%. If you're on the uh, $60 a month plan, the nerf that you're getting is going to be between about 35 to 45%. That is still, that's not as bad as what I'm getting nerfed, but it's still an incredible nerf. But let's take a look at what they're actually using as their credit calculations. So the first credit calculation they give is a small task. They say your user prompt is 21 credits. Your tool calls, you're going to do 11 of them. And that is going to be about 272 credits. And for, for a total of 293, so the small one, look at some of the examples. Logging adds logging to a service, updates error handling. That's such a minor task. And we're looking at 290-ish credits there. The medium task, we get up to 860. Then we look at the large complex task, 4,261. Now, I just want to bring up a calculator here. Because remember, my particular plan, 56,000, divided by 4,261, that means I could do 13 of those complex tasks which makes me think that running my evals is not gonna be possible anymore with augment code at my current plan, which is mind blowing to me. Now, if we go to the 130,000, which is what a lot of you probably will be at, you'll be at the $60 a month plan, 4,261, you're going to be able to do 30 complex tasks. So maybe, you know, if you're working, you could do like a little over one a day and that's not really doing you know, anything else really. That is, that is a crazy, crazy, crazy nerf. Now I do want to touch on this because this is one the biggest thing that I have an issue with. I'm really, I guess I, if I chalked it up to a couple things, um, it's this and the credit system, but this, the user message model is not sustainable for augment code as a business. For example, over the last 30 days, a user on our $250 max plan has issued 335 requests per hour, every hour for 30 days, and is approaching $15,000 per month in cost to augment code. How do you roll out a $250 a month plan and allow that kind of abuse? It's wild, but let's read on because maybe they'll talk about the regular user. This sort of use isn't inherently bad, but as a business, we have to price our service in accordance with our cost. 100% agree with that. A credit model fixes both of these problems. It allows us to charge customers based on what they use in a way that supports the Augment Code's long-term position as the best AI platform for developers working in large complex code bases. This change will increase costs for some Augment Code users, our goal over the coming weeks is to make sure our customers have as much information as possible about how this change may impact them. All right. So let's unpack this a little bit here. We have one user. They said one user. For example, over the last 30 days, a user on our $250 max plan, I'm reading this as 335 requests every hour, 24, 24 hours a day for 30 days straight. How in the world could any company roll out a $250 max plan like, plan like that and not limit them in some way to curb their usage? A daily limit? 
Heck, maybe even take a little bit of a loss on these people that are just crazy power users because you know you make it up on them bringing people in. But you cannot allow $15,000 of cost to you on $250 plan. But nowhere, nowhere in this particular art article, and here I'll just show you up here, nowhere in this particular article does it cost any or does it talk anything about the regular user the user mo message model treats every interaction as equal but tasks can differ significantly in scope so th this is where i struggle so much because yes the whole purpose of this is to build a distribution around okay 30 percent of the messages are going to cost this much 30 percent are going to cost here the rest are here what does that mean our cost per message is on average? All right, we need to mark that up by this amount. Now we need to make sure that it gets extrapolated out so that basically across all of the things we're profitable. Some you lose on, some you make a crap ton on, some you make a little bit on, and then everybody makes out well. So that is the user message model. Does that mean that maybe a better nerf would have been just lowering the number of user messages you have available? 100%. Does that mean that maybe just rolling out a actual token-based pricing model would make sense? 100%. What doesn't make sense to me is why we would actually consider a credit system. I do want to just take a second here. I know if someone from Augment Code is watching this, I'm a huge fan of what you guys have done today. You know, while I may not agree with all the decisions you've made, you know, I've argued with you on the model picker and you've come around on that. Uh, I really like your context engine and how that's evolved. I love that you're rolling out CLI. But I really want you to think about these three things. The number one thing is you need to clarify the profitability piece. Because right now, your message feels like you're blaming everyone for the actions of a few. And that doesn't feel good. And I want you to rethink credits because I don't think there's a reason to implement a imaginary currency in a system when we already have dollars that we pay you and tokens that we consume. We don't need an, a middleman between the dollars and the, and the token. Show us the tokens, give us some, heck, do what Cursor's doing, give us uh, X number of tokens or API, whatever it is, like whatever it is that makes sense, but don't, don't, don't like introduce this like confusing credit system. I know other people are doing it, I also dislike it there, so I'm not picking on you for this. I understand where you got that model. And the third thing is, there's very little that differentiates you from Cloud Code, from Codex, from Open Code, from Droid. The one thing that is going to actually win companies over, especially for like individual engineers, is going to be transparency. Because the switching cost for me to go from one tool to another is basically negligible. So if you want to actually win in this space, you need to be hyper transparent. You need to not blame a few people for why you're making the change to everyone. And I think it's just incredibly important for every company to understand that. Now, I understand that I've been nerfed more than normal because I'm on the legacy plan. So is everyone getting nerfed as highly as I am? No, but they are getting a massive, massive nerf in their usage. And I would love for the explanation, when I say clarify profitability, to be, if you look at our $20 a month users, we are making, we are losing money on every one of them because of this. If there are people that are gamifying the system, such as, hey, they're trying to figure out a way to keep agent loops going longer by using MCPs, cut that off. Like there, there, There's ways that I think you could curb the extreme usage of this uh, without having to overall your entire system. Now, the other thing is, if you do need to go usage based, which I do think is maybe the right play long term for you, either bring your own key or usage based, do that in a way that's not introducing a third currency. This isn't a mobile app store. This isn't a game where you actually have to have these in app currencies. Let's just be very clear you're consuming tokens, those token costs money. We show that to the developers. Now, it, from an engineering standpoint, if you're considering canceling augment code, I can't blame you because this has got to be 
like one of the worst changes that I've seen in any AI coding tool to date. How it's being rolled out and communicated seems to be the worst that I've experienced to date. I felt really rug pulled by Cursor when I paid for an entire year and then they overhauled the entire pricing plan on it. I feel a bit rug pulled with Augment Code because I got grandfathered in and I'm like, $30 a month, this, this is an amazing deal. They are celebrating me because I was an early adopter. They're bringing me into the $50 a month tier. I actually did not abuse the system at all. You know, I, I do a lot of like just regular querying and searching through it. But I would say you're going to have to like look at um, your your alternatives out there. You know, $30, $60, $200 a month. Um, I kind of have come to this realization that you're probably going to need to spend about $100 a month, maybe $120 a month to get the level of like coding, I don't know, assisting that you, you probably would need for a full-time professional job. And I think that can be done, you know, with Augment as part of that tool set. But I also don't think it's a requirement anymore. I think a lot of tools have gotten really good at doing everything Augment could do. I can load up open code or uh, clog code or codex and ask any question to that, to that about my code base. And it is really good now where early on Augment had that in the bag, like it was faster and it had a great response, but others have caught up with them. You know, the, the level of, uh, I'd say lead that Augment code on the, cap the context engine, it's kind of eroded away a bit. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on all this. To me, it's wild and I hope, I really hope this doesn't end up sinking them as a company because I feel like when people start getting hit with this change, they're going to be insanely upset. I mean, you can just look at it in the comments on that X post that I made. People are not happy about this change. Anyway, I wish I had better news for this one for today, uh, but we'll just have to monitor the situation and see how it goes. Till next time, everyone. Peace out.